Now against Donkey Kong. Uh, now Donkey Kong in this game is not the same as he was. He still has that grappler tendency where his grab game is very strong, but he doesn't have the, you know, oh no, I, I'm at like 40. Oh yeah, Better he, not he still can't, he still can't land worth a damn. Uh, he's still a big boy, so it's not too difficult to land hitboxes. And on a multi-hitting move like Hollow Tennis Nair, you know you're getting all that delicious damage, but oh. Dan finally getting allowed back on the stage. Not I love long. that beefy up B, but kind of like it's only for an instant. Like, you just get that breath of fresh air to have it be taken away. I am really liking the way Utopian Ray is, just the way he looks right now. You mean how he's schmoovin' and how he cannot let Dan breathe without taking percentage? It'd be like that. He was very much the same in Smash 4, and I could expect him to be the same here in Ultimate, regardless of who he's piloting. But I do know oh, he's been talking up a I... storm about Palutena, and we could see why. Yeah, I mean, one of the things about Palutena that always, I guess, was slept on about her in Smash 4 was her movement. She had amazing airspeed, really good ground speed, a solid dash, but just the nature of the game never really let her use that. In the end, she ended up just going in for raw dash attacks a lot of the time. But now that the game has been sped up, look at the way that he moves around. He spaces, and with those nice hitboxes, she might not have the fastest frame data, but it is effective at dealing with these characters, especially Dunk. She's great for an aggressive zoning type of character because she's got the tools to damage from a distance. And as we've been seeing multiple times from Ray, uh, neutral air and forward air help with keeping a opponent off stage if they manage to. And Ray's been doing a really good job of choosing when to just keep racking up the damage or to back off and give Dan some respect. Unfortunately, there hasn't been many of those times for Dan. He's still looking at bleeding percentages, already down on his second stock. And it's honestly not looking much better. He has yet. activated Rage. Never mind. Rage deactivated. Oh, I'm sure Rage is activated. It's not on Donkey Kong. Uh, no, it actually starts at 120% now. Well, oh, you mean like the, meta, the, the, the physical yeah. Rage? You mean the, 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 uh, the, the frustration and the brutality <laughs> of going up against a Palutena like this? Oh. Yeah, when you're an NPC in a single-player game, it's not too fun. <laughs> when you're a training mode bot. Oh, no. <laughs> The training when, mode in Smash, 4, in Smash Ultimate is so good. <laughs> when you want to be a cool trainer, but you find out you're just cool trainer. <laughs> it's a rough life. And that's it. It's only wow. getting worse, wow. bro. As Utopian Ray takes a very convincing game one. He was a three star. He was. Then he was down to two, and then it was one, and then it was none. And that, Ray, it was, it, Ray it was all a three stocks. Star. Yeah, he yeah. had his stocks. He had all three of them. It was a, as the books say. Do you think we'd get a character switch from DK Dan? Of course, his, you know, he's maining his namesake right Boy, now. Boy, I hope so. <laughs> Just because he's named DK Dan doesn't mean he needs to go down with the ship that is DK. Um, there are plenty of characters to choose from, and Ultimate, at least early on, is looking like it's going to be a kind of game where you must play at least two or three characters. It's, it's going to be so hard to learn and be efficient at so many matchups as a solo main. Like, you're only yeah. doing yourself a disservice at that point. Or you could just main Pokemon Trainer. <laughs> Three eh. characters in one. There, there's definitely some merit to playing Trainer uh, because I, I of that. I really like the character. Oh, I love Trainer, oh, I too. Love I love Trainer. Who are you, this playing? Is, Who are you uh, uh, Oh, I'm playing a whole mess of characters. We can talk about that later. Because okay. right now, DK Dan is, in fact, switching off. He's going to Wolf, Ooh. and I feel like this is a much smarter pick for him. Let's see if it has any effects on the room. I will say, it seemed like on the one hand, yes, he can maybe get back to stage earlier, but remember how he was DK and he'd get hit off stage and he'd basically be fine? Yes, it was rinse star cycle repeat over and over and over again, but uh, if he's Wolf and he gets hit off stage, he might not get to 140% to die to a back air, you know? It's very true. However, Wolf has a lot more tools to be able to fight back against Palutena. For one, his narrow lets, gets him out of situations incredibly quickly. And on top of that, forward air chains are going to allow Dan to fight for stage control a lot easier than you would have to attempt to with Donkey Kong. Now, we didn't get a chance to see much of that DK prowess in game one, but hopefully this wolf uh, gets piloted to uh, better ends for Dan. Well, already it's doing pretty... Yeah, you were going to say? Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, so that was the first time I heard uh, Wolf's off the screen KO. That was a pretty neat. Thing Star too, KOs are phenomenal in this game. Some of them are just meme material like Wolf, <laughs> who's just like passionately howling into the wind. And then there's others who are screaming like they just watched their family get boiled in a pot. <laughs> Doesn't Pitt say, I wish I learned no, to yeah, fly? He, uh, no, yeah. He, no, he, uh, he voices one of his regrets about how he never learned how to read. <laughs> that was it. 
But if there's someone who we know can read, he's definitely Utopian Ray. This man <laughs> has not stopped in where he's putting out hitboxes on Dan, and Dan's just been going right into him. Unfortunately, he can't do much about that with Wolf. Wolf still maintains a lot of linear aspects of his approaches and recoveries that he didn't draw. So Man. it's you know, looking like the same note for this character here as he gets chucked into the blast zone and he's not going to die just yet. He is doing a good job of avoiding those, uh, those side beats from Palutena. You know, as Donkey Kong, he fell into it quite a bit. But, you know, one thing that, uh, you know, we're so occupied with the characters. Oh, that was all right. That is one thing that Donkey Kong couldn't do. Donkey Kong cannot take a bad situation and turn it into a gold mine. Right there, finally getting his first stock on Utopian Ray, and he does have a lot of rage on his body. That means his combos might not work as effectively. I'm, you know, of course, we don't know. Some characters might work better with rage in terms of combos. But uh, at the very least, he will be killing, especially considering that this stage is one of the uh, smaller that we have available to us in the uh, tournament list. It's very strange because in Melee, the stage itself was fairly small, and then his blast zones were also notably small. This stage here, it got fixed since Melee. Yoshi's story itself has widened, and its platform lanes are actually some of the longest out of all of the competitively viable stages. With that being said, though, its blast zones are also slightly tweaked to match that, but not by as much as you'd think. Its lateral blast zones kind of on the thinner end of things, and its ceiling, as we've already saw from the first stock of this game, is fairly close in. You know, I feel like, especially as commentators, we get so fixated with the characters, because there are so many new characters that we get to see, but these stages also can really change things up, you know? We played a game for all these years where we basically had five stages to choose from in Lilac. Now we have, like, seven stages to choose from in Lilac. Damn. <laughs> You just gave Dreamland the most credit I think it got in its entire <laughs> lineage in Smash 4. <laughs> Rough life. Anyways, uh, Yoshi's story has been an interesting setting for this match. However, it's a lot the same note that we saw from Game 1, where Ray is just controlling so much space so easily, and he's not even really committing to when he's going to go for a trade with Dan. Not only that, but you notice that you know when he gets a single hit in, it's brutal. Like... There's so much damage that DK Dan ends up taking. But when DK Dan gets a hit in, you notice he knows how to play in disadvantage. He'll throw out the side Bs. He'll recover low. He'll put himself in situations where, oh, okay, right at say he has a great disadvantage. He takes 69% real quick. This is looking like it might be a comeback. No, it won't be. Wow, you're really on time with these today. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like you're gassing him up. You're doing a great job. And then look at this. Look at this sweet combo. He's almost got this. He's off stage for one moment, <laughs> and it's curtains. <sighs> That's the way it goes sometimes. But 